Well, we're finally in Darwin. Kit and I flew from Melbourne this morning, and an interesting fact, Melbourne is 20 kilometres closer to Darwin than Sydney is. Well, this morning, Jet and I left Melbourne on a Qantas 737, flew across the country to start our father and son trip. Jet, Air Frontier, a little bit smaller than the 737, what's that telling you? <laughs> I think it's telling me we're going somewhere a little bit more remote. Remote, and that means the fishing's good too. After you, young man. I'm a little bit excited. A short taxi to the runway, then a 45 minute flight. Then we're in paradise. We've just leveled out at seven and a half thousand feet. We're doing 150 knots. At this rate, mate, won't be long till we get there. Are you happy with the nice, calm flying conditions? Uh, yeah. And you're happy I organised a first class seat for you? I think the hot meal service comes soon. Finally, we've touched down in paradise. We sure have. How's the colour of that water jet? Let's do it. Let's go, man. We have literally not been here more than an hour and I'm already sampling some of the best seafood I've ever tasted in my life. And tomorrow, we wet a line. How cool is that? Interesting fact, the view from the shower at Coburg Fishing Safaris is 11 out of 10. I could hardly sleep last night thinking about fishing, and now it's time. I'm pumped! Normally on a day's fishing will target a species, but at Coburg Fishing Safaris that is so difficult because things just pop up. Going along, just seen some tuna jumping. Then we'll head over there, could be goldies. We'll literally let the fish find us today, and I reckon it's gonna be a pretty epic session. We're literally different fish, different fish, different fish, different fish. We might pick the target at the end based on the biggest one we catch. And that's what happens when you wind up. Oh, oh Jet, look at them all. Throw it out again. Let it sink. Oh my god, they're there really are fish it. everywhere. They're it's trying ridiculous. to eat you. Watch this. You ready? Yep, I'm ready. Oh! <laughs> he dropped it. <laughs> oh, just dropped it straight down, mate. There are so many queens into the boat, it is just wrong. Oh, We're yeah. trying to get a fish off the bottom, and we literally just can't get to them because these fish that's are a just. Good queenie. Oh, look, they're all oh, over. They got it. I think they got it. Oh! Look at him. They ate it on the drop, mate. Look at that beautiful fish. And Jet's had about 50 hits in the meantime. You keep fishing, mate. I'll just swing this guy up. 
And, oh, Porter's going to speed up. It weighs a bit more than I thought. And that's a Ooh. good queenie. And where there's one, there's a thousand more. Oh, pirouette. So we're going to do a little bit of foraging, Clara. Yeah, we've got a really nice low tide, so perfect to find some coconuts and some oysters. Beautiful. I love oysters. Yeah. That is a monster. Look at the size of that. Oh, yeah. That's a serious cockle. And Clara, these things actually live in little families, do they? Well, that's what I sort of say. I'm not sure if that's what they're doing. You must spend a lot of time out here talking to the cockle. Yeah, it's okay. Yeah, that's it. I'm here by myself. Well, if you keep your eyes peeled, it's amazing what you see on these reefs. Look at this jet. One, two, three, four, five. Grab them. We've got a whole little pod or school of cockle. There's another one there. Is and even, oh, even if you move a rock, you, this little spot here, we found ten in one go. I'll give you a hand, mate. There's another one. Look at that, a handful of cockles from about two minutes of foraging. And it's interesting, Clara actually said you find them in little pods. I think that's what you call a group of cockles, but I haven't looked on the internet lately. And basically you'll find one, look around it, you'll find a couple and they're all in there together. They're very heavy, there's a lot of meat in there. And Clara makes a sensational pasta. These things are just epic. Well, Clara, we have filled that bucket very, very quickly. What's next on the agenda? I reckon we're going to go and find some oysters Ooh, to add to our seafood pasta. Stop it! Yeah. I might even sneak one fresh off the rocks, I reckon. Absolutely. The further we go, look at the oysters already starting here. All right, Paul, so we found a few oysters here. These yep. are our black lip oysters. It's uh, one of them, it's at the top shell, and we're just going to try to open it from the side. So you're going from the side? Yeah. Oh, just look at that. gentle, so we're not going to destroy the oyster. Yep. That's a bit of a skill, I imagine. No, you just don't want to go too hard, so... <laughs> there you go. Look at that for an incredible oyster. Now, that's all good eating, isn't it? Yeah, they're fantastic eating. Absolutely. Do you want to have a try? I'll give it a go. Just on that. And they grow naturally here on the rocks. Yep. They keep on growing. Look at that for presentation. And that is going to go in my belly. What do you reckon? Just slurp it down? Oh, yep. Whole piece. So good. Nice. Oh, let's try something different then. Oh, cast upstream and bounced it back, Jetty. We might have a bottom fish here. Ooh, what have we got? Cooter, maybe. A uh, trevally, maybe. What have we got? Threadfin. It's a little, what is it, Jet? Blue salmon, it looks like. It is a blue salmon. I'll just try and get him a bit closer. Didn't he go hard? He sure did. Here we go, mate. If you can grab my rod for me. Sure. Oh. Now, what do you reckon these are closely related to, Jet? Uh, Slippery fish? Threadfin salmon. I reckon you might be right. Look at that. Looks just like a threadfin, only hasn't got the big whiskers. Beautiful little fish. Normally get these at River Mouse, chasing barramundi. They taste alright, but I think there's better things out there we could eat. <laughs> yeah. Oh, he's jumping on the other side here. It's a queenie. Good work, mate. Oh! <laughs> he is going to go up. He has swallowed that black here, mate. And look, are they beautiful fish? Just look at the skin S and the, the light. It is absolute chrome. Look at that. We're actually running a ball sinker down to a hook and then a plastic on that. Uh, it is right down his gob, mate. Well done. Look at that. Out of control. So is that. I think yours is a bit better than mine. Oh, I don't know. They go hard at the start. They must be pretty thick down there, right? I almost got a... Oh, yeah, you baby. you got a trout up. Stop it. And you've got oh, a... Oh, I've got a tricky. Well done, mate. I tell you what, that might be a tricky snapper. I tell you, these coral trout, they are tricky. Oh, they're the best eating fish in the sea. They certainly are. I think this one's just undersized. I'm Devo. 
I just had to take a minute to show you around the camp here at Coburg Fishing Safaris. This is the greatest dunny in the world with the best view. Come and check out the rest. The mud crab hole. That's where me and Jetty are living. And this is my absolute luxury tent where me and Jetty are hanging out. Two beautiful beds, super comfy, fans the works, and again the view. You're never ever gonna get enough of that. Let's go. And this is the beautiful sunset deck designed specifically for the consumption of alcohol and seafood. And of course, watching some of these beautiful Northern Territory sunsets. And this here is the campfire. Seriously, the smell is incredible. That's just the fire in those two pots is tonight's dinner. Some of the best food you'll ever eat in your life. And it doesn't matter how hot it is, you always love a good fire. Just look at it all day. There's plenty more to see, keep coming. And this is the coastal kitchen, open dining room and kitchen. This is where many a fishing story has been told. I'll give you the tip. Shower with a bush view. More outdoor amenities, love that. That one's a toilet with another bush view. And as the sign says, this is the way to the beach. A beautiful little harbour at that. When you make that small little journey down the cliff, you end up in Clara Cove. How beautiful and aptly named. This is where the boats leave in the morning. Seriously, if you ever Google paradise, there's a small chance that Coburg Fishing Safaris is gonna turn up. Yep, yep, yep. That's a big fish, mate. You got, yeah, he's still on there. All you can do is try and hold him up. Right, just have to touch that drag. Just to touch, 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 that's it, that's it. And just hold up. That's big, whatever it is, mate. S factor, by the way. That's not a queenie. And you just S factor it up. Okay, lift, lift if you can. And just pump and wind. That's it. Just try and get him up from the bottom. That is a big fish. Now, we just put S factor on. It's all over my finger. I might wipe that on my plucky. Get rid of that. Oh, it could be a dewy. Whatever it is, it's big, mate. Just take your time. You're doing real well. That's it. You're doing real well. Oh, big catfish I'm talking about. Oh, just that's it. That's it. That's it. Slow and steady. And this is amazing. He turned, then you got him off the bottom, and then so that's really good. We're literally catching some smaller fish like this one after the other. But Hugh said, look, there's some big fish in this region, and there's big queenies coming in and out. But when you get these bigger fish that hit on the bottom and stay down like this, that's when it's really exciting. And you'll see Jet's doing a beautiful job here angling the fish. It's only a light rod, that Jet, but it's got a lot it's of power. It's a very light rod. It, does it feel easy to use because it's light? Yeah, he's going okay, on the boat. Okay, come so around the front. Oh, you're doing a good job there, that's it. That's perfect. Do not let that line touch the boat. And, and it's all about slow and steady. You want to come around? Yep. I can help if you want. No, it's good, it's good. Good boy, that's it. So never panic when you're on a big fish. What we're doing here, the boat's now actually drifting off the fish. It's a lot easier for Jet. And if you wanted, mate, are oh, you doing well? I you're think right. I'm good, I think I'm good. Okay, I'll get rid of this rod. Thank you very much. You're doing well. You can just see, if you don't panic on a decent fish, it's, it's not difficult. A lot of people put a fishing rod in their hand, they start almost falling over. A little Look bit of sea here. His rod. That's nice. I reckon you might have a trevally, mate. See that tip just going, See it's going round. Tip, tip, tip. You might have a big trevally here. Yeah. And there's not many fish that are tougher than these. I'll give you the tip. Coming up in circles. Yep. Ooh. This would explain that fight before we had that, the big head shakes, and I thought it might be a bottom fish, but then all of a sudden it turned and you got a bit of line on him. Yeah, bottom fish, you would have thought would have taken me in. Yeah, you would have, yeah, exactly right. He might have taken you to the bottom. I don't know a lot about this, Jeff, but I know one thing. What? It's big. There Want he is. Colour? We've got colour. Just take your time now. You get cobes here. I don't, it's do. not a cove, it's a big it's trevally. It's not a cove, it's a big trevally. I just tell by that kick, kick, I kick. I can see it. I think it's a big brass here. I can see a yellow tail. It's right, cool. the net. There he is, he's a solid oh, fish, Oh, it's mate. solid brassy. Very nice, just take your time. Slowly play him up. Gee, you swallowed that plastic too, eh? Hey? Oh, oh yeah, boy! <laughs> Woo! That Mr. Reef? Is a very, very solid brass fishing rally. Well, look what I caught it on. That is amazing. Um, you're puffing and panning a bit, mate. What's going on? Oh, a pretty big fish. That's huge. He is a solid brassy. And he weighs, mate. 
<laughs> he weighs a lot. Look at the size of the fat guts on him. That is just unbelievable, mate. I reckon that fish, I'm not gonna say what it weighs, but it's very, very heavy. <laughs> and see the tail scoots down the back there? Very sharp. Extremely sharp. You're gonna handle these things, make sure you wear a glove, they will cut you to pieces. We've been catching these fish for a while, but the first brass to rally that was scientifically named was actually by an Australian zoologist in 1887 off the shores of Papua New Guinea. I think he did well. Well, I think he stuffed up actually. They're not brassy, they're gold. <laughs> Now this right here is a beautiful brassy trevally and he's going home. On the Coburg Peninsula, there's heaps and heaps of fresh produce and today, Jet, what are we chasing? Mud crabs! Yo. In this sort of country is my favourite, just under the actual base of the mangrove root. Um, we're looking for probably a little bit lighter sand here. We're looking for dark grey sand and we're looking for holes under the actual roots. Preferably with a little bit of water in them. Keep your eyes peeled because sometimes you'll actually find them sitting there just under the roots, not even in the hole. We've actually seen a good mud crab just in front of his hole. But I'm going to try and get him. Go easy. Take your time. Slowly go in there. Slowly move the spear. When you reckon you've got a Good foot position. You go for him, mate. Oh. Beautiful. <laughs> and there is an NT mud crab. Well done. Keep your fingers away from him. Mud crabs start off as eggs and then turn into a larvae known as a zoaea. They take 18 to 24 months before they become a mature mud crab. When it comes to mating, the female releases pheromones, which is just like perfume. It attracts the male, the male picks her up and carries her for up to four days until she starts molting and then they mate. I can see one up here with its back out. I'm going to go get him. Oh, it's a big one. Jetty, come and have a look at this one. Oh, look at the size of it. That's a big one, hey, Jet? That's a beauty. Change of location and a change of rig. I've got a little extended pad here. You'll see there's an Optia swivel, small dropper down to my squidgy prawn. That is a 5.0 Gamma Katsu live bait hook. I reckon it's going to get some really nice action. And for a sinker, I've got a small rocker Gamoku jig. That'll bounce along the bottom, attract the fish. This is just going to go beautifully, I reckon. Bit of a change on the tradition, but it should work. Lots of little fish there. And some bigger ones. Oh, yeah. Oh, yes. Now, how many little bites did I get then, Jet? A lot. Get, to get to this, and I reckon, I reckon I've got a coral trout. Yeah. What are your thoughts? Coral trout and maybe even a little type of cod. Yeah, I'm just going to get him up. What have we got here? Tricky. Tricky. I'll tell you what was tricky, trying to figure out what I'd caught. <laughs> Look at that beautiful tricky snapper, and some say one of the better eating fish on the reef, and I have to agree. See that little live bait hook right in the corner of the jaw, and the plastic, well that's long gone. I'm getting a bite, I'm getting a bite. Oh, you just got him! Yes! Well done, mate. Now, another little change of pace, trying something different. The anchor is down. Got a few baits soaking out the back, and how long that took? Oh, trout, mate. Oh, Beautiful. It's a trout. And you know what? That's a good sized big one. Lift him up. Yeah, Woo! boy. Look at that. Now that makes us lads very happy, doesn't very it? Very happy. Why are we so happy? Because it's a coral trout. And isn't it amazing? Now, he's more orange than red, but generally he's red. A bar cheek coral trout. This one's got the beautiful blue spots on his yeah. cheeks there. Why is it that redfish all seem to be tasty? I don't know. All of them, pretty much. True, isn't it? Yeah. Red emperor, coral trout, largemouth nanagai, etc., etc., etc. But these things, one of the prettiest and the tastiest fish going. Well done, my friend. That Thank is you. beautiful.
So Jet just caught a beautiful coral trout. Last night I saw Hugh making up this mix, it's called Namus. And basically you've got a vinegar, a lemon or a lime which adds acidity, and then you put sugar in that to get a balance and the acidity actually cooks the fish. In there too, this is an Asian one. There's chili, coriander, garlic, just keep adding bits till it tastes sensational, a bit of ginger. And all I do is get my coral trout, it's raw, and drop it straight in there like that. And what it will basically do in one hour, that will be cooked because of the acidity and it is ready to eat. You can actually see the pearlescent glow on that coral trout. That is just amazing. We put all in there, put the lid on, give it a shake. It is going to be just sensational this afternoon. That's a good fish. That's a good fish, Jet. Oh yeah, that's nice. So I went for a slightly bigger bait this time. We've had a slight change. Oh, taken the plastic off and going to bait. Just mixing things up, trying to do as many different things as we can today. And uh, got a nice fish here, Jetty. I don't know what we're like in relation to each other. Have I got you? No. Is that a finger mark? That it is sure is. A finger mark, a beautiful finger mark, also known as a golden snapper. And this is a golden moment because Hugh said, if we switched to bait, made a small move, we would catch some goldens. Aren't they magnificent fish? Look at it's them. A beautiful fish. Called different things in different states, but all I know, they pull hard. They're a member of that Lejanet family and they love eating big baits. Oh. Oh yeah. Hit him up. Well done. <laughs> oh, yeah. Lift him up. Hold well on, buddy. Yeah, no, they're big. Oh, that's a good fish, mate. Good fish. Get him up off the bottom. Oh, has he got you in the snags? No. Nah. That's it, slow and steady. I just got pumped again. Yeah, it's a brassy. Insane. Jet, why do you love this sort of fishing so much? Well, you just don't know what you're going to catch, really. It's just such variety, and I love the species that you can get. It's like a, it's like gathering, because yep. pretty much all of them you can eat, you can. and they're beautiful. Oh, and they hurt your back a bit, don't they? Yeah. You go to the front, you might have got a big grassy there, mate. Yep. What have I got here? I have a big golden snapper. Big golden snapper on the same dodgy bit of bait. <laughs> that is, oh, sorry about the lens. You know what, when there's water on the lens, as Alex Julius says, it means there's fish coming over the side. Now look at this. That is a magnificent fish. And how good is a spot when you're catching quality bottom fish like this one drop, and then beautiful pelagic's the next. It is literally going off. Big brassy, mate. Oh, Very it's a big lovely room. fish. Isn't that amazing? We saw these come up before, didn't we? Yeah. We saw them follow my fish, and they must just be hanging around together. Bring it back up. That is a magnificent Woo. fish, mate. Look at the weight on this thing. That's a drop. big fish. A big fish. Oh. Now, obviously, the fish we really want to catch are those goldens, because they're just so special. But I reckon there's about a million kids around the planet who would just give anything to catch a fish like this. Yeah. They go pretty hard, eh? And you'll see, we filled that coral trout before, made some numbers and the belly flaps, and now they're working catching fish. We are wasting nothing today. That's awesome, mate. I'm very proud of you. Nice brassy. He's going back. It's been so amazing already. So many fish, so many different techniques. But Hugh tells me, two miles that direction, he's got something else very special to share. Well, get your lips around that. Proof is in the pudding. Very, very good. Mm, that's a flavour. Sharing is caring. I'll just keep this little bit, boys. Thank you for the food. <laughs> it is so good. This is the two we're on doesn't give us food. Mate, <laughs> you picked the wrong boat. Look at this. <laughs> mm. Beautiful. Hey, Jake, whatever you do. Oh, that's big. Okay, lift. Lift. That's a real one, mate. Good boy. That's it, go hard, go hard. It's on one little mullet. One little mullet. This goes to show elephants do eat peanuts, don't they, mate? It's a big cod. It is a 
big oh. cod. <laughs> That's a good fish. That's the size of that, mate. Let me swing it over. That's a sick fish. That is a. Well, how can you tell it's sick? Doesn't it look well. Oh, uh, he's a cod, I guess. Oh, you mean sick as in fully sick, bro? <laughs> as in really cool. Now, do you know what sort of species of cod it is yet? Uh, let me have a look. Gold spot? Gold spot? I reckon we might call it a gold spot. You know why? Why? It's got gold spots. Could be a honeycomb. Do you know what? I think it's a gold spot. I'll tell you two things about these. One, of course they're great eating, but two, man they stink. I think he just regurgitated <laughs> what he had for breakfast and there's always a crab in there. <laughs> I think you might want to do something about uh, the toothpaste you're using, mate. How's the fight on that thing? I'm sick, he just yeah. went... Just going hard. Big tail. Gives very big, powerful pushes. They're not good over a long distance, but on a short distance, powers everything. And these things, massive gob. And the teeth actually point back in towards the throat jet. So if something goes in there... It ain't coming out. It ain't ever coming out. It's this cod's lucky day. He's going back. sharks around I'm legit playing with them and dad said I might even be able to catch one look at this <laughs> oh, I got my head. Jet mm -hmm. this looks like the coolest thing ever I know just toying with them eh <laughs> that is ridiculous <laughs> <laughs> Let him have a go, let him have a go. <laughs> he's actually, he is actually stuck on a rock. Let's say we uh, put a hook in and have a closer look at one of these things. Yeah. That's it. There he goes, let him swim away, just let him swim away. Let him swim, and you're hooked up, sir. <laughs> <laughs> That's the beauty of an inline circle hook. Now, Jet, your mates at school, what would they give to stand on the beach and catch a shark? I think a lot of them would do a lot. <laughs> look at this beautiful guy here. Circle look in the corner of the jaw. He is not going to be bothered too much at all. I'll get to show you this beautiful, beautiful fish. Look at that, mate. I'll do the shark handling, OK? Pretty sure it's a bull shark. Uh, it could be a bully. I have no idea what species he is, mate. There's just too many. What I'll do, I'll just grab him over the back of the head and the tail. And that jet is one of the most beautiful creatures on the planet. Aren't they just absolute machines? They are. What do you like about sharks? Oh, just love the way they're like, their predatory instincts and stuff. And those teeth, that's the scary bit at the front there. They are just designed to live forever. And believe it or not, sharks actually outlive the dinosaurs. Oh, there's a big shark there coming to eat our tuna. This guy's gonna go back. We think he might be a bull based on the shape of the head, but we really don't know. It doesn't matter. We'll never forget the day we wrangled sharks at the Coburg Peninsula. Well done, mate. Thank you. Beautiful rocky headland. The light is slowly dropping. Getting closer to dinner time. Jet and I are getting a little bit peckish. Hence, we need a fish. We need... Oh, yeah! yeah. Oh, there's the fish on cue. Oh, it's big. Oh, Getting smoked! Oh, I'm getting smoked, all right. That's a big fish. I'm gonna struggle. I'm gonna try and pull it up the beach. Coming up, we jet. Okay. Oh. I'm coming, I'm coming. It hit hard. And now, we've got some rocks in front of us here, buddy. So if you can use your spotters to try and spot the rocks, because I yeah, don't want this fish to get us on the too. rocks. Wow, how's the take, mate? Mate, that thing's smoking you. Didn't it go? Oh! Oh, it's got a big fin on it. It just goes to show, Jetty, you fish. don't have to be in a boat to catch big fish. And how special is it? Is that, what is that? I don't know, I don't know. How special is it, though, when you're catching these big fish big around fish. these rocks? Oh. oh, it's a big queenie, I think. Oh, it's a oh, big it's queenie. A queenie. Big queenie. No wonder you got smoked. Oh, that just hit so speed. hard. I've got to try and get him away from those bombies. Yes. Oh, That's the right side of the bombies. That's He's a, a nice fish. fish, mate. Oh. oh, look at that. I always say, Jet, 
this a big queenie too? Just pull him up for me. Oh, stop it. <laughs> I always say that a queenie lamb base is worth about 10 in the boat. Hold that for me, mate. How Look special there. is that? Look at that fish. Now, I'm just going to try and grab him by the tail, Jenny, and hold him up. Look at that beautiful light. Now, you've got to watch these things. They flick all over the place. That is a magnificent fish. First cast on this point. You know what I can smell now, Jet? What? I can smell the fire cooking because we're about to eat like kings. Well, queens anyway. I think you're going to need a bigger fire. Holy moly. <laughs> there you go. I'll look after it for you. How do you want it cooked? Uh, medium rare. I'm going to catch other fish. Well, the scene is set. I can feel the romance in the air, Hugh. How are you going to cook this beautiful bit of fish? Very simple, I'm just going to put it on a bed of tamarind leaves and then butter, lemon, a little bit of salt. All the things you need to make fish taste good. I tell you what, salt air doesn't hurt either. So how long is that going to take mate? 10 to 15 minutes I reckon, not too long. What do we do while we wait? Have a guess. Fish. I like it. <laughs> Let's do it. It's a good size, big one. Oh, well, he's going around the back of the rock. Oh no, he's coming in. Come around the rocks. Oh, I feel rocks. Well, you know what? <laughs> You're in a bit of trouble here. Watch your feet. It's not often. Oh, Jet's getting hit too. What is it, mate? I think it's a little. It might be another queen, Eric. Oh, a little Mackie. I thought it was a little tuna. <laughs> when it Mackie. popped up, I thought it was a little, little tuna of some description. Well, look, it's a little Spanish mackerel. It is too. It had that round head to it. Like it had that thick body shape. Yeah. Well, yeah. When I was out there, I thought it was a little tuna too. Well, I just yeah. didn't want to say it. Uh, <laughs> Neither. Spanish Neither. mackerel, ole. <laughs> How good does that look, mate? What do you reckon? Well, I reckon I'll be able to tell you in two seconds, but I say fish is like wine. It's all about who you have it with. Well, lemon, the flavour. Mm. That What's is so good. Mean? I've got to say, as good a bit of fish as I've ever had. Well, I spoke to this bloke about six months ago and I told him that I want to take my boy on an epic father and son journey. We've had such a blast, haven't we, mate? Oh, it's been awesome. Look caught... at some behind you. Uh, yeah, he, hasn't, <laughs> he hasn't stopped. We've caught so many fish offshore, those beautiful golden snapper. He's wrangled sharks. We've gone and frolicked on the rocks and caught oysters and pippies and literally lived the father and son dream. That's what it's all about. So make sure you put Coburg Fishing Safaris on your list. I hate to point my fork, but I'm going to because it is out of this world. Hugh, thank you very much from a very happy father and a very, very happy son. Pleasure, mate. Cheers. Yeah, Get into boys. it. <laughs>